A few months ago, I made a video called Goku vs. the One Piece Universe, and it is currently my most viewed video on this channel. And the response I got to that video was surprisingly positive. Sure, there were some negative and rude comments, but most people were very nice, and the like to dislike ratio wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. The overwhelming support for that video has encouraged me to pick Goku up against another anime universe, the My Hero Academia universe. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Who in their right mind would put Goku up against the My Hero Academia universe? Well, the joke's on you because I am not in my right mind. It's your boy, the Hot Rodster here. And in this video, I will be discussing different matches between characters from My Hero Academia and Goku. Before I dive into my analysis, we need to cover the rules surrounding these fights. Some of them are the same as my last video, such as, I will be analyzing 1v1 matches between Goku and specific My Hero Academia characters that I believe would make an interesting fight. And at the very end of the video, I will be analyzing a battle between Goku and the entirety of the My Hero verse. In my last video, there were no death matches allowed, but this video will be a little different. Goku's battles against any hero will be a friendly fight, but his battles against villains can be death matches. The reason for this is because I honestly believe that Goku would get along with a lot of the heroes. I don't really see why they would even get into a life-threatening conflict, but I can see how he would get into these conflicts with villains who wouldn't think twice about killing him. These battles will also be under the assumption that Goku just entered the My Hero verse to fight. This means he has no knowledge of his opponent's abilities or weaknesses prior to fighting and vice versa for the My Hero characters. And last but not least, I won't be getting into any manga spoilers because I haven't caught up with a Dragon Ball Super manga and I do not want to spoil any anime only My Hero Academia fans. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's kick off this video with our young green protagonist, Izuku Midoriya, AKA Deku. If you are familiar with the series, you'd know that he has a quirk called One For All, which acts as a basic strength enhancer. At this moment in the anime, Goku can use this quirk at about 20% without breaking his bones. We have seen All Might use his strongest move, the United States of Smash, at 100% efficiency. It was so strong that he left a crater in the ground and he created a tornado that was strong enough to lift buildings. While this is a very powerful technique, it pales in comparison to Goku's strength. When Goku fought against Beerus, their clashes actually destroyed planets. So if Goku's casual attacks are way stronger than All Might's most powerful attack, then Deku doesn't really stand a chance at this point. Deku has awakened the quirk Black Whip, but he cannot use it for long, and I doubt it would be effective against Goku. It's possible that Deku will learn some amazing quirk that will allow him to overpower Goku, but for now, I cannot see any scenario where Deku actually defeats Goku. The hero killer Stain has a quirk that allows him to paralyze people when he ingests their blood. The only record of Goku's blood type that I am aware of was listed on the Japanese magazine Animage in April of 1987. His blood type was listed as B and coincidentally, Stain paralyzes blood type B for the longest period of time. So this is definitely a point in his favor. Now the real question is, would Stain even be able to inflict a wound on Goku with his blades? I personally believe that there are a few scenarios where this is actually possible. Goku has a very relaxed fighting style, so it would make sense if he let his guard down very slightly and possibly give Stain an opening to make a small cut. Stain has so many blades and we've seen him use them to sneak a cut on Deku before. But the best scenario for Stain to actually paralyze Goku would be for him to actually get a sneak attack right from the beginning. This way, Goku's guard is completely down and Stain would have a chance to actually pull this off. However, even with this guard down, and it's very possible that Goku would be able to sense his murderous intent. Honestly, I'd give Stain less than a 10% chance to actually pull off any of these plans maybe even less than 5%. Next up is the killer whale hero himself, Gang Orca. His quirk, Orchinist, allows Gang Orca to produce hypersonic waves that paralyze his targets instantly. When used from a distance, the paralysis is not as effective. Like with the hero killer Stain, if Gang Orca is actually able to paralyze Goku, he could 
easily win the fight. And again, paralyzing Goku will be the most difficult part of this fight. And not to mention, a long range paralysis might not even be enough to incapacitate him. I believe a close range attack would do the trick, but I also believe that Goku would be more cautious at a close range, especially against someone who looks like Gang Orca. And finally, even at a close range, Shoto was able to slightly use his fire half of his quirk. A paralyzed Goku may actually still be able to fight and do some damage. So overall, I'd give Gang Orca around a 2% chance at beating Goku. Next up, we have the young influencer, Hitoshi Shinsho. His quirk allows him to brainwash people just by talking to them. The only condition for Shinsho to brainwash someone is for them to verbally respond to something he has said. This technique would be very useful, especially against people who are unaware of what his powers are. So if we assume that there is a bit of conversation between Shinsho and Goku, then the chances are that Shinsho will win that fight. And let's be honest, Goku would probably talk to Shinsho if he initiated the conversation. Once he is brainwashed, Shinsho can make Goku do whatever he wants, including give up the fight. I actually believe that Shinsho has a 70% chance at winning this. Next up, we have the hungry boy himself, Soramitsu Tabe. His quirk is called food and it allows him to bite chew and digest anything he comes into contact with. There's actually little known about this quirk, so we don't know what the extent of his ability is. But it is possible that he could actually eat Goku's attacks and even eat Goku himself. However, I think that Goku is pretty smart, so if Tabe actually injured him, he would not let it happen again. I believe that Tabe has a less than 5% chance of winning. Next up, we have the gaseous villain. Mustard. His quirk is called gas and it allows him to generate a poisonous, sleep inducing gas in large amounts. If Goku ever inhales this stuff, he will pass out until he is treated. However, the trick would be actually getting Goku to inhale this gas. I'm very sure that Goku would be very cautious of breathing if he was surrounded by strange gases, and he wouldn't actually have a problem finding Mustard in gas since he can sense his energy. I'd say that Mustard's chances of winning are less than 1%, but if by some miracle he got Goku to inhale his gas, I could see him winning. But that is far from likely. Next up we have the R-rated hero herself, the one and only Midnight. Her quirk, Somnambulist, is actually very similar to Mustard's gas. Midnight produces an aroma that forces people to fall into a deep sleep. It isn't anywhere near as dangerous as gas, and it doesn't give off as much of a threatening presence, so Goku is actually more likely to breathe it in. I'd give her a 5% chance at victory. Next up is the principal of UA. He's an animal. He's Nezu. His quirk is called High Spec, and it gives Nezu unparalleled intelligence, perception, and comprehension that far exceeds any other person. This superior intellect may allow him to create some crazy, brilliant plan that allows him to defeat the unstoppable Saiyan. I honestly don't see how it could be done, but if anyone could figure it out, it would be him. I can't really give a percentage chance since I honestly wouldn't even have the first idea as to how he would even go about defeating Goku. Next up is the cute girl herself, Aerie. She has a really unique quirk called Rewind, which allows her to reverse a living being's body back to a previous state. This quirk is so dangerous that she could actually erase someone from existence. There might be a few problems with her fighting Goku though. First of all, Aerie isn't really a fighter, so I doubt she would even be willing to fight. Therefore, if she had an altercation with him, she could accidentally kill him since she can't really control her power, and since she's not a villain, that would go against the established rules. But there are some other possibilities as well. For example, she might reverse him back to a baby, or de-evolve him into whatever Sans evolved from. Maybe monkeys, who knows. But what is also possible, and more likely, is that while Aerie is freaking out, Goku knocks her out with a light neck chop. I'd say that Aerie has a 3% chance at winning. Next up, we have a man with an ego so large that he named himself after his own quirk. It's not all for one, it is Overhaul. His quirk allows him to disassemble and reassemble anything he touches. He only really needs one finger to make contact with something for his quirk to activate. If he actually touched Goku with his hand or finger, he would easily win the fight. So it all depends on who pulls off the first attack. I'd honestly give Overhaul a 35% chance at victory. Next up, we have the last 1v1 match. 
He's a boy who loves destruction. He is the one and only Tomura Shigaraki. His quirk, Decay, is actually somewhat similar to Overhaul. Both are capable of destruction, but only Overhaul can reconstruct. But Decay has some features that Overhaul doesn't have. Its effects can spread to anything connected to the target while Overhaul cannot. And against humans, once Decay is activated, it won't stop spreading unless that part of the body has been amputated. Like Overhaul, Tomura Shigaraki will definitely win if he is able to touch Goku. Actually, he doesn't have to touch Goku, he just has to touch something that Goku is standing on. However, if Goku noticed the ground was being destroyed and that destruction was approaching him, he would most likely get out of the way especially since he can fly. But yet again, I still think he has a better chance of beating Goku than Overhaul because his quirk is just so much more destructive. I'd give him a 45% chance at victory. Finally, I'm gonna talk about how Goku would do in a full-on battle against all of the My Hero Academia characters. And in that battle, Goku is probably going to win. He is going up against hundreds of characters, so he probably won't be dropping his guard. It is still possible for him to lose, but I just don't think that it is very likely. There are a few people he'd have to watch out for, like Tomura Shigaraki and Overhaul, but it seems like something that Goku can probably handle, especially if he is really focused. It seems like the My Hero Academia universe just cannot measure up to the mighty Saiyan, Son Goku. Well, that was about half of my power. What did you think? Thank you for watching my video. What did you think of my conclusion? Do you think I missed anything? Let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure to smash that like button and to subscribe if you want to see more Goku vs videos in the future. I'll see you in the next life. Peace out.